we'll go ahead and call this meeting in order. Uh, 727 Central Standard Time. We've got Victor, Lynn, and Jen in here. Um, we need to go ahead and approve uh, the agenda. So I'll make a motion to approve. Lynn, you'll need to second. Oh, that. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> second by Lynn. All right. Motion to approve the prior minutes. There's a link there. Oh. If you want to review Is that them. in the email. Yes, it was in the email I sent like after the last meeting. Oh, okay. That one. All right. Uh, here it is. Click here to view. Ah, I do not have access to this file. Request access. Uh, you can, or you can just look at the old business down there. The old business was all the stuff that we talked about. It's number six. E six. But where's the, like the, the thing, where, how do I approve? I'm so sorry. you just verbally say seconded? Oh, I approve, I second it. I okay. thought at one point there was some stuff I had had to click on. There's, yeah, when we ever vote on anything, okay. we'll have a voting link, but these are just motions to approve. Do you understand why my 17 year old calls me a boomer? <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. All right, so the prior minutes and the agenda have been approved. We'll go ahead and move into the staff reports. So I'll turn it over to Jen. Good evening, everybody. Um, like to go through uh, my report here. And the good news is I do have a lot of, of good things to report this meeting. Um, and that's always the best part of these meetings for me. Um, as far as the organi organizational chart is concerned, uh, we have one committed pillar lead right now, um, running Operation 1620, we're, we're lacking in the other pillars, um, partly in due to inconsistency from people that have made commitments, um, and then people um, being busy with other events and stuff like that. So um, obviously can offer grace for some of that stuff, but um, when I don't get any responses um, or any kind of acknowledgement on things, it's just kind of been kind of frustrating. But um, all that to say, we are still doing things with each pillar. We are, are still putting content out. We are still having activities. Um, we are covering them. It's just taking a lot more work from the leadership side to make sure that those things are being tended to. Wellness, uh, Project Triangle, movement. Um, there, it's it's just kind of all all of us covering for those things right now. So that'll be good when we can get people in there that are um, willing to put the work in to, to keep those programs running things that we have pending right now. Um, a lot of it has to do with finances. Obviously we have Arizona veteran MMJ reimbursements. So we're still working through website issues and speed. Hopefully in about four weeks, we'll get some improvement there. Grant submissions. Um, we've had recent conversations with our grant writer, still working through our financials and getting that in order to be able to apply for some grants. Policies, procedures, SOPs, those are all still things that um, are in the shelf right now and need to be developed and, and are developed here and there as time um, as time, basically um, as we're able to, I guess I should say, um, because Caleb, Melissa, and I are, are just doing so many other things right now and just keeping our operations going that coming down to writing the SOPs and policies and procedures, just kind of like we're, we're doing that kind of as we go. Um, and it's not the end of the day, but um, end of the world, I should say, but it's just something that needs to get done eventually. We're waiting on our deposit of funds from the Massachusetts charity golf event that happened mid-August. The conversations that I've been having is that their money is being held up in PayPal. So there's no timeline as to when that's going to be rectified, but that's a $20,000 deposit that we we significantly need. Um, we had fundraising flyers sent. So between the cones that we have and the and the rolling trays, I just kind of pitched the community, hey, if you're willing to go out to some head shops, if you know anybody that owns any stores that's willing to buy these items, it would help us with some fundraising. We have had some in-kind donation asks. And we do have a team for the Army 10 miler. There's two people that are going to be running in that. They're in communications right now to get organized and figure out the logistics for that. And then I had somebody from our community reach out who lives in the area that just wants to go and be supportive. So I thought that that was really cool. Uh, Mark's going to be running that, kind of organizing that. And so I passed on him his information to him. Um, job descriptions kind of goes in, li in line with the policies and procedures. 
um, talked about the co-branded co cones. Uh, there is a press release that's in the works right now that should be coming out soon. We are still evaluating our new merchandise supplier right now. Uh, it's been me. Our shop has been on hold for the time being. We have had some sales online, but um, until we either get a supplier or I get proper equipment here, it's just kind of something that's been hanging, which unfortunately hurts us financially because we can't make those sales. But um, again, there's <laughs> just a couple of us trying to do everything. So um, we'll see how that goes. Space Cannon Partnership, that's kind of been on the shelf right now as well. I'm waiting to hear back from them. We have an overdue bill, um, again, with finances that will be rectified as soon as that comes in. I attended the New Jersey Cannabis Advisory Golf Tournament a couple of weeks ago in New Jersey. It went really well, wonderful um, organization, wonderful people, really great event. And uh, we'll be waiting to hear in probably a few weeks how we did with that um, event. MJ BizCon, we were given um, an Associations Day spot for MJ BizCon. Our past sponsor is um, in cannot help us this year, essentially, to give us a sponsorship. So we're currently looking for a sponsorship to be able to get to that event. Um, so that's in the works as well. Application process um, implemented into website for hypnotherapy sessions. So we have a clinical hypnotherapist that is going to be doing sessions for our community. We're going to start um, a sign up process for that. And then I threw in here the dis disconnect between Operation 1620 and BVN. It's something that Caleb and I have talked about recently um, and, and making an attempt to try to bring those communities together. There's a history between the old Operation 1620 Facebook group people and BVN, and they're a part of BVN, but don't want to be some of them. So it's just kind of like nurturing that relationship and showing them that um, we still care about them. We care about what they're doing. We want to support them. Um, and I essentially asked them, what would they like to see going forward? So I'm just trying to help our community and give them what they want, what they need. Um, and then I've been continuing follow-up with former partners. So there's so many partners, sponsors, relationships that this organization has had in the past. And it's just a constant like, okay, I haven't talked to this person yet and doing a lot of intros and a lot of like maintaining and trying to nurture these relationships that have been involved with BVN in the past. So there's a lengthy list. Um, it's been pretty good so far, but um, it's just definitely something that I'm always in the process of working on. So our successes, we got the committed amount from the golf tournament over what was estimated. We were told we would get, we would get a minimum of 15,000. We will be getting 20,000. Um, I spoke to the veteran that runs Primal Outfitters up in Michigan, everything outdoors with veterans from fishing to hunting. And there's definitely an opportunity in the future for us to get involved with them. He wants to support us so much that he asked me to send him a couple of stickers that he can put on his fishing boat, which he takes out on the Lake Michigan and the rivers around there all the time. And so that's cool to have that type of support, um, at least for now. Our social media presence has been better. Again, this is this is something that I manage <laughs> as well. And I've definitely been trying to be more thoughtful and be more intentional with posting, um, not three or four posts in a matter of a couple of days, but really trying to spread it out and um, keeping some sort of consistency with that. I feel like it's it's been going all right. We worked on a fourth quarter fundraising strategy. We've got some really good ideas for coming up for the end of the year for that. Um, I talked about the annual, the Cannabis Advisory group, uh, group Golf Tournament. And we talked a little bit about Hero Carts Project earlier. So they will be adding us to their website as a partner organization. We already have them on ours, but we have been in comms with them and um, at least know that we, we're supportive of each other's organization. We are re-engaged out here in Phoenix with uh, Plant Body Soul. We were invited to attend their Friday High Day After Dark event. Um, it went really well. The relationship there is awesome. They're super supportive of us. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know, Plant Body Soul is run and owned, managed by the same um, person that owns Canacula, who just took us on as their social impact partner. So um, everybody over there is really wonderful and it was a great event. 
I had a veteran reach out that's in the Illinois area that's hosting a Veterans Day disc golf tournament, and he wants to benefit BVN. So we're trying to give him as much support as possible um, for that tournament that's coming up. That was um, really thoughtful, and it looks like it should be a good event. Um, like I said earlier, we have our no-cost hypnotherapy sessions that will be coming up. We'll, we're starting that in October. Press release is going to be coming out soon. Um, a huge win that we had this past week was our newsletter. Um, I don't know if you have not signed up for it. If you did not get it, please consider signing up for it. It's something that we're going to be doing every month. Um, I'm actually changing the tempo of the ED meetings to where I will have one ED meeting a month and then the other day will be dedicated to getting our newsletter up and uh, ready to go. So kind of rearranging some some time there and some planning, but um the newsletter it was a huge success. I keep checking our stats. We, uh, 24 hours later, I think we had like a 30% click rate or 30% open rate, which I can't be mad about that. Um, out of four or 5,000 people on our list, I think we had 25 that unsubscribed. So I'm not mad about that either. I'm mad. I'm not mad about anything with, with those numbers. I think it's a wonderful start. The fact that Caleb worked to get our spam issue resolved, that was the one thing that was really holding us up on that. So Super exciting to see. I'm excited to go forward with that and just continue to improve. Um, and like I said, MJ BizCon acceptance for Association Day, looking for a sponsor for $3,000. So if anybody knows an um, organization or a sponsor that would be willing to help us out there, that is what our ask is going to be for two of us to attend that. And last but certainly not, not least, Mark Good, who was our movement pillar lead, completed the three-week University of Health and Performance in-person training course, and he was an honor graduate. And I've talked to him, and he really got a lot out of the program, got a lot out of his time there, and just really happy that he was able to have the opportunity and have that experience um, and got so much out of it. As far as changes go, we are not reimbursing anybody right now for financial reimbursements. Um, we don't have that to give at this time, um, so unless it's already been approved. And our focus right now is just really increasing our member numbers and fundraising. And there have been all hands call for help um, through my meetings and to our members to basically like start a social media fundraiser. If it's your birthday, consider having us as your um is your charity to raise money for um, if you want to see if anybody's willing to donate to one of our programs, if they want to be a sponsor for Wellness Lounge. I mean, anything and anything is helpful to us. So if anybody out there wants to help, just please consider doing those things for us and getting our name out there. Um, they were given some ideas, and so uh, we'll see what happens. And then um, kind of the same here at the bottom, we do have that 30, 60, 90 pillar plan, but again, we need the people to be in those um, those positions to help run those programs. So um, all in all, it's, you know, everything ebbs and flows. I know we talk a lot about, you know, our ops tempo at times, it's sometimes better than others, but the past month or so, or past couple of weeks, I would say things have been going pretty well, um, considering with what we have as far as our, our funding constraints. So we're improving, we're getting things done, we are um, being engaged, and um, that's all I can ask. I think overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with everything. So that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. I had a thought. Um, I'm hardly excited about leaving this crappy job at all. But um, with my being out beginning of November, and that being the month of Veterans Day, one of the things that we had talked about, like that I did in the past when I, or I was going to do when we were in uh, at Tripler was I could do certifications for an Illinois or Pennsylvania event. And that might bring people in that you could either say we're providing free or really low inexpensive certifications at, at the event. And okay. so, I can do that and the uh, Illinois and California and Pennsylvania easy Hawaii you have to actually be there so I don't think you're planning on sending me back to Hawaii but uh, for one face to face but you know the, that might be something that could sweeten if it would be helpful the puppy thinks it would be helpful 
get down. She's like, it's time for dinner. <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, that could definitely, it could entice people to go and attend for sure. Um, that's definitely something to keep on the, keep on. Through like telehealth? Lynn? I can do it through telehealth. It's easier to be actually there, but um, the intention, and it got kind of swamped in all the other events that happened at Tripler, but the, because I'm licensed in Hawaii too, and I was going to actually be there, was to advertise, you know, you have to take care of this part in advance. I don't think in Illinois, there's much you need to take care of in advance. In Pennsylvania, you have to do something in advance, connect to the site. But in Illinois, I think I just meet with someone and do the, get the last word, their social and bim, bam, boom. And I can do it telemedicine, but it sometimes is easier if I actually am sitting there to get people yeah. chatting about it. Okay, definitely keep that in mind. Victor, did you have any feedback for uh, Jenner? Okay. I will move into the, the financial report here. Um, I updated these numbers probably 30 minutes ago or an hour ago now. Um, we current cash on hand, very low, $3,112. And that's between our three accounts. Uh, our accounts payable, $6,600. So we are negative right now. If we were to pay this off, we would be, you know, screwed. And a lot of that is our 20,000, the 20,000 that was committed to us is tied up in, in um, PayPal or something. Um, so like it's, we're about to have to do what I don't like doing and that's paying the minimum amount, amount on the, the credit card and just to get us to, to the next funding step. I hate paying interest. I never do that on my personal stuff. Always pay the statement balance off and we've always done that with BBN other than one other time. Um, and then we paid it a few days after that. So it was a minimal charge. So don't like where we're at now, but there's not a lot we can do about it other than just pounding the pavement and, and reaching out and having conversations. So we're just trying to do that. Um, uh, monthly revenue with the last few commits has gone up to 7,500 on average. That's 90,000 a year. And that's what we are year to date with the, the pledges. Uh, we have a $20,000 pledge from Vantage Builders and a $5,000 estimated pledge, which that's what we got last year. They said they did better this year, so it should be more than that. But that was a Cannabis Advisory Group Golf Tournament fundraiser that Jen went to. We do not have any future payments, large future payments that we are expecting. Our taxes are also being completed by CPA Tax Services. Uh, so we should have those in before this extension is up. And we have the grant writer put on pause right now. Uh, I I actually included our statement of financial positions in our agenda this time. So if you scroll down under the financial report, you should be able to see our actual like balances, our assets, our liabilities, and our equity. Um, I'm going to start including that as often as possible, but it does require me to go in and do a bunch of the categorization. There is some categorization that has not been done. Jen and I got to get together and it's quite a bit. It's probably like $20,000 of expenses. And that has to do with the uh, the golf trips that we've had here recently. Um, fundraising report. Before I move to fundraising report, does anybody have any questions about finances? Good. All right. Fundraising report. Not much here since last uh, discussion. Fundraising is still our focus. Um, we do, I already mentioned that the pledges there, uh, Jen kind of went over the fact that Vital Options will not be paying their pledged fund this year, citing their new uh, chief operations officer placing a spending freeze on operations. Um, Green Alpaca co-branded Cones has released a press relief release with hopes to increase orders from distributors. Uh, some of this stuff may be like, regurgitating what Jen said. Like there's a roll -a -thon. it was postponed. Uh, that's in Illinois. Uh, Veterans Day fundraising. Giving Tuesday fundraising, December fundraising. So there's just a bunch of Q4 uh, fundraising planning that was done uh, and we should move forward on that. Uh, we have social media fundraising increasing since we've kind of started doing a push on that. Um, so that's helpful. We just keep pushing on that. Hopefully it will keep going up. Uh, we have one new website donor that is a recurring donor. 
Um, and then hopefully we have some donations in November. Um, so our fundraising has really turned to a, a collaborative effort between Jen and Victor was helping it put in some, uh, some ideas and really just trying to continue moving forward on this. Cause we, you know, it, this is crucial to us being able to operate and, and have an impact in, in our, uh, arena. So that is all on the reports. Does anyone have any questions there before we move into the new business? Good. All right. Uh, I'm not going to go over old business because it's 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 there. You can read it, but I'll skim through it. Nelson uh, submitted his resignation last board meeting. We brought Victor on. He's still in his introductory phase for 90 days. We talked about fundraising um, and then went over our schedules. So new business, I'm talking with another potential board member, uh, Jan Bratiano, uh, just having ongoing discussions there. Hopefully he'll attend a future meeting and, and uh, we can make an introduction and, and uh, answer any questions that you have for him. Um, great dude. I've known him since 2017. He's a veteran uh, who is in the cannabis space. He really helped uh, give us some resources and direction, and he actually owns Green Alpaca. And so he's one of the guys that has been helping bring more funding in. I think he would be an excellent uh, individual to have on the board to help us find some more resources and give direction. He's incredibly connected. So I think it would be a great resource for us to, to tap. Um, Heroic, Heart, Heroic Hearts Project. Uh, we tried to coordinate with them and we even offered a potential board seat to have them handle Project Triangle and own the, the psychedelic community. And they said that they just started talking about creating their own platform. And so they're committed to that and did not want to, to join ours. So we're having an unofficial partnership where we're basically putting each other on each other's websites. Um, but we're not going to be taking it on or they're not going to be taking that on. And since they're not, I'm suggesting that we try to get as much market share of the veteran psychedelic community space before they have time to develop their community. Um, if, if these people don't want to play nice, I'm not going to play nice. And and I know business pretty well. I don't want to do this. I reached out because I want to work together. That's my my first go-to. But if people want to let ego run them, then I will get ahead. Um, so uh, they, they'll, they're going to have many months, if not years, of lessons that we have learned. And so we've been doing the community thing for quite some time. So in my opinion, it would have been wise for them to at least ask us, you know, some of our lessons learned, but whatever. Uh, licensing. Uh, discussions are ongoing uh, on how to get some monthly recurring revenue. And so we're talking about licensing the Canna Rifle and Operation 1620. So just kind of talking to some uh, potential uh, companies that we could work with. I think Jen touched on that a little bit, um, but there's some some people that we're talking to and hopefully something will materialize out of that. Uh, the last new business is fundraising. You know, we keep saying it over and over and over, but I mean, that really is what it is. There's, there's been a decline in spending and revenue and that's a lot of it's tied to the economy uh, and, and not something we can do about, but there is things that we can do about. There is money out there that is willing to, to go to us. We've just got to find uh, the, those sources and, and tap them. Uh, November is generally one of our best fundraising months due to, to Veterans Day. So hopefully the fourth quarter fundraising efforts, you know, will take advantage of that and a nice coordinating effort will uh, provide some fruits. So other than that, that is our new business. And, and we're kind, kind of trying to figure out how to locate, identify and locate some of these sources of funding and then actually get in front of them uh, because even if you locate them it's like how do we how do we get in and let them know we want to have a conversation and even if they knew we wanted to have a conversation will they have a conversation with us so it's we're we've got to identify some of these uh potential streams and, and get in front of them does anybody have any feedback or comments on that any ideas or i know we were talking about you know fundraising before um, before we, you know, kick the meeting off, do we want to go even deeper into this? 
No, I, I just want to mention um, just one thing that we haven't talked about. Um, on October 17th, Jen and I are going to have a Facebook Live um, uh, conversation, um, probably like 30 to 45 minutes, talking about um, our positions, Jen's position as executive director, my position as a board member. Um, and I'm going to be, basically, we're going to have a conversation about the organization, um, what BVN does, the pillars, and, and, the, and the considerable need for the community to have BVN um, around. And it's going to be um, the kind of conversation that can be used um, in our fundraising efforts. For example, when somebody asks what BVN is, right now, currently what I do is I share um, I share the website and I talk about the pillars. This can be an added, added useful tool to share with folks to be like, okay, listen, you want to know what BVN is? Watch this conversation because we're going to talk about all the pillars. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to make a run of show and make sure that we, we hit the top, um, the, the main topics of each of the pillars and what, you know, the understanding what BVN is and break it down in like a very easily understood way for somebody who doesn't know what the community is about or what BVN is doing for the community. And I think that's going to help with, with some of the fundraising efforts, um, especially with some phone calls that we're going to do after that, after the fact, because for example, if Jen's out there doing some cold calling and she gets somebody who's interested in BVN, having a video of a conversation about BVN and what BVN is doing is definitely going to be extremely helpful. I know the, the bull side chats are definitely helpful, but this is the conversation that's going to cover all of the, the pillars. And I think that if, if, if we can kind of prove this concept, we can kind of continue this monthly. You know what I mean? Have monthly conversations um, with different organizations. You know what I mean? And have have that become a fundraising opportunity because something that I proved at my last organization is that time and time again, we would get a donor who would who would support the organization, but talk about the partnership in the in the meeting, in the, um, the Zoom call or the, the Facebook Live and talk about what both organizations are doing for the community individually and then what they're doing together and what the partnership means for the community. And I think that um, hypothetically in the future, let's say Green Alpaca and, I, and and BVN, you know, you have a partnership. What if you had a Facebook Live conversation between the CEO of Alpaca, Green Alpaca and Jen, prove that concept and use that as a sales pitch for a, a, another organization, so to speak. You know, how, you know, support us in this kind of way. And this can be part of the, um, the, pet, the 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 giving package, so to speak, you know, share your or your company and your organization, what you do with our community, and um, we can talk more offline about this. But um, but anyways, the the point is that on October seventeenth, Jen and I are going to have this 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 conversation, and um, hopefully we'll be able to use it in our fundraising efforts. Um, you said cold calling. What what markets are you saying? How should Jen identify who to cold call? It's not just opening a phone book and calling. So it's what markets and, and what companies should Jen be focusing on? Because we are balanced. Like is, and she's only one person too. So like I, I could probably help in that. But like, where do we put our focus? Is it going to be movement, mental wellness, Operation 1620, Project Triangle? Like I feel like there's a lot of potential in psychedelics right now. And, and that's where a lot of the funding is going. So so it comes down to um, basic fundraising strategy. In order to get, in order to call, call anyone, you need to have their contact info. So let's break it down a little bit easier, like a little bit different than that. Having a list of folks that you can sit down in front of a phone and dial their numbers and give them a pitch on the call is cold calling but get your question is who do you have on that list right so the best way to ba make a prospect list let's just talk about project triangle for example you have kind of this burgeoning community or space that's starting to grow so what you do is you look at other folks who are in the space and see who their top donors are and you start making a list based off, the, off of that then you continue to, to, you have your major donor list, your corporation list, 
in your foundation list. And for calling, for cold calling, I recommend that um, that you don't call yourself, that you help give all of us. We can all work together on this. Like we can have one Excel doc and we can be putting numbers and names in there and why there should be on that list. And I can help with this. It just comes down to research. For example, what finding who has, it's called LAI, a linkage to the organization, the ability to give money and an interest in the actual project that you're trying to fund or the program we're trying to fund. If you can check all of those boxes, that person is a prospect. And how do you find those people? You find the people who, who have money to give you. You, they're, they're, I'm, I'm talking about like the top 20 richest people who have to give money away. You know what I'm saying? And trying to tap into the networks and doing the research on who is the gatekeeper for those people. There are a lot of people who have a lot of money who are required to give their money away. Or who, there's also the top 100 donor list of folks who have promised to give their fortunes away. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about large amounts of money. And BVN does have the numbers to prove the concept that can support the concept, the proven concept of supporting the community. So all you need to do is get to the gatekeepers of those people. When they ask you who you are, what do you do? Can you prove the numbers and how you're, how successful you are? Absolutely. BVN can already do that. You just need to get in front of the right people. Understanding how LEI works is something we can do offline and I can definitely work with, um, work with both work with you you and Jen on this um but this is definitely going to take a team effort and in our the call that we had a, a couple a di couple days ago um we were talking about fundraising for um for fourth quarter Jen isn't going to be the only one cold calling okay I'm going to do some cold calling as well and I think I, I recommend that you do some cold calling as well for two but I think um as board members it's in our best interest to set Jen up for success as much as we can. So helping her with her list is definitely something that, that I'm definitely going to help her with. You know what I mean? Um, it's not easy to make a list like that, but um, it's something that needs to be done. And being able, I've already scheduled some time aside to allocate towards this one particular function. Um, so I'm going to do my, my, my part as far as helping with that. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> I, we can't hear you. Yeah. Identify these other orgs, uh, other orgs that are getting funders and, and reach mm -hmm. out to those people. It sounds like kind of the first step and then ident identifying some people who have to give um, in some of those foundations. I, I think that is a good start. And I would love to to continue this conversation after the board meeting just to Okay. So we can get some work done before our, our December report meeting. I'd love to give an update on sure. our efforts. Okay. Um, cool. Well, that's pretty much everything. Does anyone else have any comments or, or any feedback that, that uh, you want to bring up before we adjourn? Good. All right. I will make a motion to adjourn. Second, second. <laughs> Second, eight o'clock. Hang of it now, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we are good to go. Our next meeting is Sunday, December 3rd. Please let me know if you have any scheduling conflicts. And like like this time, we kind of uh, were flexible. I appreciate everybody's flexibility. Um, yeah, just let me know and, and we'll do our best to be flexible. So thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll chat with you next time. Have a good Thanks. evening. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Bye-bye.